Hello and welcome. It is Deck Tech time. I'm Randy Bueller. I'm being joined by Martin Muller. Welcome, Martin. Yeah, thanks. Now, Martin and his team are all playing identical copies of a living end deck. Now, talk to me real quick before we get into the cards about why this was the deck that you guys chose to bring to battle here at PAX. I think, uh, like, uh, a lot of the reason uh, we really trust Olorat, he's playing really... Ah, Olorata, the Hall of Famer. Yeah, exactly. He's playing really, really much modern. I think that is basically the only, only thing he's playing on okay. Magic Online, and we really trusted that, that opinion. We think, think that, that that is definitely, like, the biggest reason why we look to living in. It's good to have teammates. Yeah. All right, let's look at, uh, look at the way this deck works. Now, the key card in this deck, it's a living end deck. Obviously, living end is the key card. Now, just walk us through the basic mechanic. I think most people who've seen this deck know this, but for the record, how does the deck actually work? Yeah, like, the deck works by casting living end, but you don't really want to draw it. You doesn't even to... have a casting cost. It does not. So you, you can't cast it. You have to suspend it and then wait three turns. That doesn't really work. So therefore, we have these cascade spells. Because if you hit it on Cascade, you can just cast it even though it doesn't have a mana cost. You don't have to wait the three turns. So if you cast Demonic Dread or you cast Violent Outburst, the result is going to be you're cascading into a Living End. Exactly. There's nothing in the deck that costs less than three, with the exception of the Living End that counts as a zero for Cascade purposes. Exactly. It, it's, it's a super clever design. Uh, Let's look at the way you fill, actually fill out this deck. So, okay, you've got the ability to cast Living End kind of whenever you want with these eight Cascade spells. We gotta get some stuff into the graveyard. Yeah. What what better way than just like cycle them, draw new cards and just put them in the graveyard and then getting huge monsters into play but and still like sweeping your opponent's board. Now, how much thought is there to the specific numbers of the cards and the, the way the cycling works out? That's like the good ones, like these two are like <laughs> probably the best one and And that's because they're cycling for one mana? The cycling for one mana is like easy, it's red or green or black or red. That's mm -hmm. like easy in a junk deck. Um, but you need more, like you need some fill off cyclists, or what you want to call them. And uh, sure. Jungle Weaver is also like pretty big, and it has, has five, some five six is not exactly small. No. And it, the creatures keep coming. The cycling creatures, in fact, keep coming. We can look at uh, the next batch. We're starting to get into some more one ofs. The fairy macabre, in particular, kind of caught my eye. Yeah. Now you were telling me an interesting story about fairy macabre in the the last round you played against Owen Turtonwall. Yeah, I played against Affinity, and like the best card for Affinity is the Ravager because then you can like sack all the creatures in response to Living End, so you get. Oh them. sure, Ravager eats his whole board, and then Living End just puts it right back into play again. Exactly. So that happened. Like he sacked all his creatures, and then I like got the two best one, and I get like a two two, and he's like getting his graveyard back, but like the oh. two best creatures. So you done. nailed it, just Fairy Macabre. You kind of have to wait for him to sack the, exactly. all of his creatures, so and then you nail him with Fairy Macabre. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, Street Wraith obviously cycles for two life. That's pretty nice. Architect's Will, more one mana cycling. This is basically the deck. It's a bunch of cycling creatures. You spend your first couple turns filling up. Uh, fair enough. Let's look at the next batch of cards. Little bit of utility. This yeah. is essentially the rest of the deck. There isn't much other than creatures to cycle into the graveyard and ways to cast the living end. Yeah, we, we have like the Fulminator Mage and Beast Within. That is like, you can like go for people lands. Like just getting a bunch of creatures is sometimes not good enough in modern. So if you can like re like take all the lands away, then you can like keep some combo decks like uh, away from killing you. And mm -hmm. I think the Spirit Guide is really important because if you didn't have have a, a Spirit Guide in your deck, I think it's way too easy to play around. Like to play against this deck, if you if you knew all the time free mana is the only thing you can do uh -huh. stuff about, then I think it would be too easy to play around. Got it. So you can surprise them. Two mana, the opponent doesn't think Living End is coming, and all yeah. of a sudden, kablam, like, you know, middle I, of an attack step or something. I played against Li Shi Chan, and yep. he played Burn. And in game three, he was on the play, and he just like Molten Rain my land. Ah. And if I didn't have a Spirit Guide, then it would just be like a clean time walk. But I had a Spirit Guide, so I could still like defend me a little. Nice. Uh, let's look at the mana. Basic. This is your uh, everyday, ordinary, modern fetch land mana base, yeah? A little few of fetch lands and chuck lands. Bloodstained Mire, one each, Stomping Ground, Blood Crypt, Overgrown Tomb. Relatively straightforward, just reliably gets you the colors you need. Yeah, it's like, like how modern mana bases is. Pretty much, and you can see even from the, the next batch of cards, you also, uh, you've got those fetch lands, so, you know, the basics, not that many, and then Black Cleek Cliffs and Copperline Gorge. Yep. And those are, those are just the right multis for this deck. Yeah, exactly, and like it's really good. You don't need more than three mana to like anything specific, specific unless you like are starting casting giant monsters, which isn't plan A, but <laughs> you can do that sometimes. But you just like pain free, it feels really good to just uh, play your untapped dual lands in this format without like taking a million damage. Makes sense. Now, talking about the sideboard. 
probably not surprising given the creature theme of the deck. It starts out with a bunch of creatures. Yeah, exactly. It's like a uh, streak mode. Like, obviously, you can k uh, play something that is like less than three mana. This is like a, a terror, right? It's two mana, kill a guy, and it doesn't get healed, hit by Limian, but it's like even better because when you actually kill something, you're going to get it back when you're living it. Sure. But you're also going to get back your Shriek, shriek more, and you can just kill it again. Yeah, Evoke is kind of perfect for this deck, right? Yeah. The big mana cost, it doesn't mess up the Cascade engine, but you get to do something effective, cheap. Ingachur, same basic it's idea. Same thing. Uh, yeah, and then the Brindle has got that sort of Fulminator Mage mode where yeah, it comes down, it does its thing with a Sacrifice ability, and then comes back again. Yeah, exactly. It's the only <laughs> way you have to win against Burn, pretty much. Now, Fairy Macabre, I see two more over here, and it sounds like that's a sideboard plan against Affinity, or, I mean, how many decks do you actually bring those in against? I think you, you need them against Affinity because of Rarity, and you bought them in against, like, Viserys Deer decks, but it's, like, also a hitch against, uh, like, the Grizzle Shield deck. Like, <laughs> we were pretty sure it wasn't that good, but okay. if people broke it, then <laughs> if you don't want to, like, if you can, you can just, like, draw up trade card, just got Grizzle Vine, and if you don't have, a, like, a way to exile it, then you're going to get back the crystal band like on your living end. Nice. So, now, what was the metagame that you guys were expecting coming in? Like we expected like Grixis was like level one, right? And like okay. twin decks. And like this deck is fine against those. But if people are trying to attack it with like Bogles or like uh, collected company Sue and stuff like that, John absence like if level two and three I think living in is really good. I also I thought about playing Amulet because that is like the modern deck I know the best. Sure. Um, but I think that is worse against Grixis, so I kinda want to like have, this is li really good against like level one, two, and kind of three. Okay, so if level one is the Grixis control decks, so you had a deck that you thought was good against the decks, other decks good against Grixis exactly. control. And still fine. What, and what do you make of the metagame that actually showed up? We've got, you know, no Tron, we've got no Amulet, we've got a bunch of Bogles decks, you four are all on Living End. Yeah. It's kind of a crazy metagame. It's pretty crazy, but I, I don't think we can be like unhappy with that many Bogles deck because if you have like a free mana. Sack all you guys. That is like really, really tough. I don't think you can basically lose that matchup. All right, so a crazy metagame, but you're happy with it. I'm really happy with all it. All right, yeah. we got one more uh, set of sideboard cards to round out the rest of the deck. The, the non creature portion of the sideboard. What's uh, what Ricochet Trap for primarily? Uh, basically, Counter Spells. That's like you can, if you play Counter Spell, you can play one red mana and mm -hmm. change the Counter Spell target itself so it fizzles, so you're living and still resolves. Makes sense. And who does uh, Dismember come in against? It's like uh, all around. You can take it in against Twin to like have some more insurance against uh, the combo. You can bring it in against Infect to have like a cheap interactive uh, spell that doesn't get hit by a Living End. So it's like all around. Makes sense. And now, so far so good for you, right? You're 2-0 with this deck? Yeah. And 4-1 and overall. Yeah. That's got to feel great, That's right? Feel if you wait 17 years old, right? Show yeah. up to the World Championships, put up the 4-1. You're going to be a deck fully have a positive record tonight, one way or the other. Yeah. I guess the question now is, is how positive? And this Living End deck will be what you play for the next couple rounds? It will. <laughs> Good luck to you. Yeah, thanks. That'll wrap things up for the Tournament Center. We'll be back.